Hey guys, Dr. White here. Um, part two of our uh, steel wool stretch experiment for the uh, ultimate chemistry course uh, .com. So just a, a little refresher on what we did uh, for the uh, uh, steel wool stretch experiment. We took a piece of steel wool and uh, we weighed it and then we stretched it out and then we uh, saw if there was a difference in the mass. Okay. Now, uh, before you did that, I asked you to make a uh, prediction, right? Um, is the mass going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay. Now, whatever prediction you made, okay, you were using some sort of model in your head. But I want to dive into the model that you're using uh, to make your predictions. If we were to zoom into the, uh, the actual steel wool, right, if we could see all the little tiny particles that make up the steel wool, what would that look like, right? So I want to... I want you to draw two boxes, okay? And then the first box, we'll call this the before box. And the second box, we'll call this the after box. And then I want you to represent the particles of the steel wool. And, and let's just keep it simple. Let's just say there's 10 particles of steel wool, right? So the steel wool, if we were to draw those particles, it might look something like this, right? Okay? Particles that are all together, right? It's steel wool's a solid, right? What do we know about particles? Particles of a solid. All the particles are together, right? Uh, there's some sort of organized fashion, right? And then if you spread out those particles, what would that look like? Okay. Now, if you spread out, maybe we change the way that the particles, right, are together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So this is what your model might be for the steel wool particles after, right? Now, it's the model that determines your prediction, right? If you thought that we start with 10 particles and we should end with 10 particles, right? Then your prediction was probably that uh, the mass should not have changed, okay? If you believe that particles actually end up leaving the system, right? Maybe the particle is not here, but maybe the particle comes out of the system. Then if we weigh this, right, put it on the balance, then this afterwards you would have a lower mass, right? Because you've got less particles, okay? If you believe that in uh, stretching out the particles, maybe somehow you created other particles, uh, maybe they came from the air or something, right? then maybe you might have thought that the mass might increase, okay? So my question is, what's your, what's your model, right? Would you draw it the same number of particles? Would you draw it a particle leaves? Or maybe there's extra particles that come in. Well, what were the results of the experiment? The results of the experiment is that we got a decrease in mass, okay? So which model would you choose? Same number of particles? Maybe you lost a particle or maybe you gained particles. Well, if we lost mass, the model that you would choose that might be the more correct model would be that, oh, there's some particle that came out. And indeed, that's what we saw if you looked afterwards. Um, there were some pieces of steel wool that had fallen to the counter. This was our first experiment, right? We were looking at uh, steel wool. We were making a physical change happen. We were stretching it out and uh, we had a change in mass, okay? Now, hopefully you're able to explain the results of that experiment by using the model that we developed, right? And so that model, okay, moving forward, that model is that matter is made up of particles. And if the number of particles stays the same throughout a process, then the mass shouldn't change. But if we lose particles, then the mass should change. Now there are three more experiments in the series where we're going to be using that same model, okay, with particles. We're going to do three different, we're going to do three more experiments, and we're going to see how that model can help us predict what's going to happen.